Has the legendary city of Atlantis been found? Off the coast of Sicily, scientists claim to have made a sensational discovery that would completely overturn our ideas about ancient advanced civilizations. A city on the seabed that is 12,000 years old. Let's take a journey together into the depths of the Mediterranean and see the remains of the supposedly sunken city. So make sure to stay tuned until the end. A warm welcome, everyone. Atlantis, the sunken city that Plato already reported about. Could it possibly have been found off the coast of Sicily? It would be like winning the lottery for archaeologists and historians. Write me a comment with your best guess about Atlantis. What do you think the legendary sunken city is all about and where do you think it is? I'm really excited to hear your theories. And before we dive into the details quite literally, I would like to ask you, ask, as always, if scientific mysteries fascinate you as much as they do me, then please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And before we dive into the details, literally, I would like to ask you, as always, if you find such scientific mysteries as fascinating as I do, then please subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing, you'll never miss a video again, and you'll be helping me out a lot. Thank you very much, everyone. But now, let's get to the mysterious find in the Mediterranean. In recent weeks, spectacular news has been making the rounds. An engineer named André Chausson claims to have discovered a huge sunken city off the southern coast of Sicily using modern mapping technology. The supposed metropolis is said to be located about 40 kilometers off the coast of Porto Palo di Capo Passaro at a depth of approximately 130 meters. Chausson's analysis of underwater map data suggests that the structure is gigantic in size, about 17.6 kilometers in length and 4.4 kilometers in width. For comparison, that's roughly the size of Manhattan. But the most spectacular thing about it is that the city is supposedly 12,000 years old. That would be a complete paradigm shift for our understanding of early advanced civilizations. Chason even identifies the underwater city as Telepolos, the legendary city of the Lestragonians mentioned in Homer's Odyssey. And indeed, looking at the maps he analyzed, one could think that structures, a harbor, rectangular buildings, and even an artificial canal surrounding the city can be seen. According to the map data, there is a remarkable canal 51 kilometers long and 500 meters wide that surrounds the city and rises about 50 meters above the surrounding seabed. This configuration suggests a defensive structure with access to the sea leading to a harbor, says Chesson, a highly advanced civilization that built complex cities 12,000 years ago, long before the ancient Egyptians or Mesopotamians. That would mean we have to completely rewrite the history books. But as is often the case with sensational discoveries, it's worth keeping a cool head and taking a closer look at the facts. First of all, all claims so far are based solely on the interpretation of underwater maps known as bathymetric data. No one has yet investigated the structure on site. The story is somewhat reminiscent of the supposed road to Atlantis that was thought to be visible on Google Maps in the Atlantic a few years ago and later turned out to be a display error. An experienced underwater archaeologist, Fabio Portella from Syracuse, who serves as an honorary inspector for the Sicilian Maritime Authority, expresses significant doubts about the interpretation. Portella explains, I think it's extremely unlikely that we'll find man-made structures there. There are natural steps and slopes in this area that can easily be mistaken for artificial structures during superficial investigations. We are at the transition to the Ibleo Maltese steep coast, a kilometer deep abyss. And indeed, there are several reasons why scientists are skeptical. The most important one concerns the dating and the sea depth. 12,000 years ago, when the last ice age ended, the sea level was lower than today, but not by 130 meters. The highest levels of the last major ice age, which peaked about 20,000 years ago, led to a maximum sea level 120 meters lower. The depth at which the alleged city lies, therefore, does not quite fit the claimed time period. Even more problematic is the size of the alleged city. An urban settlement almost 18 kilometers long would be very large even by today's standards. For a civilization from 12,000 years ago, this seems downright impossible. At that time, humanity was just beginning to engage in simple agriculture and build the first permanent settlements. By comparison, the oldest known temple complex in the world, Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, is only about 11,000 years old and not nearly as complex as the one claimed to be underwater. The regular structures visible on the maps could very well be of natural origin. Nature sometimes creates truly, surprisingly geometric formations. Just think of the perfectly hexagonal basalt columns of the Giant's Causeway in Ireland. 
Another important point is that Chasson may have selectively evaluated data that supports his thesis while omitting contradictory information. This is a classic example of confirmation bias. You see what you want to see. But does that mean we should completely dismiss the discovery? Not at all. The history of archaeology is full of discoveries that were initially ridiculed, but later proved to be groundbreaking. Gobekli Tepe itself was initially viewed skeptically by many experts. Fortunately, BIM. Fabio Portella is planning an expedition to the mysterious underwater structure for the coming summer. With modern diving robots and sonar equipment, he intends to get to the bottom of the mystery, quite literally. It's a beautiful idea that should be tested. That's why we're going to conduct dives in international waters this summer. The currents there are strong and visibility is low. Devices such as ROVs, small underwater robots with sonar and cameras would be helpful. If the discovery turns out to be real, it would be extraordinary. But to be honest, I don't have too high expectations, says Portela. The story of Telepolos would not be the first supposed discovery of Atlantis. Since Plato's account of a highly developed island civilization that sank into the sea in a single night, researchers and adventurers have been searching for Atlantis. From the Azores to the Bahamas, from Antarctica to Crete, but even if the structures off Sicily turn out to be of natural origin, the idea of sunken cities remains totally fascinating. In fact, there are several archaeologically confirmed underwater cities in the Mediterranean. For example, Pavlo Petri off the coast of Greece or Baja in the Gulf of Naples. The Mediterranean definitely still holds many secrets, and the seabed is ultimately a huge archive of human history. Modern technology such as high-resolution sonar systems and autonomous underwater vehicles open up possibilities that were not available to previous generations of archaeologists. That makes the whole thing somehow so exciting. Possibly, we are on the brink of a revolutionary discovery. Or, we will once again learn how easily the human brain can be deceived when it wants to recognize patterns. One thing is certain, the search for sunken cities will continue, as long as there are seas and people who are fascinated by past civilizations. Personally, what I particularly like about this story is that it reminds us of how little we actually know about our own past. I mean, we were there as a civilization, but still, human history is like a puzzle, of which we have only found a few pieces so far. Every new discovery, whether confirmed or disproved, helps to complete the puzzle. What do you think about it? Do you believe that an ancient megacity really lies dormant off the coast of Sicily? Or is it a misinterpretation of natural structures? Write me in the comments what you think. And if you don't want to miss any updates on this story, feel free to subscribe to the channel now and activate the bell so you don't miss anything. And now we travel to a lost place of a completely different kind, namely to Chernobyl. In the exclusion zone, scientists have discovered a black fungus that feeds on radioactive radiation. And this fungus could even play a role in space travel in the future. Everything about it and exciting original footage of the fungus can be found in the video shown at the top right. Be sure to click on it. The algorithm has picked out another video especially for you at the bottom right, so be sure to check it out. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.